I'd really like to start making more videos about the creative process and sort of just, you know, day to day, what it's like making things, you know, kind of like the stuff that I've done with the self-awareness video and um, talking about how there is no perfect video, various things like that. Um, but I don't know, I, there's some part of me that feels like that would be really helpful for people to hear, you know, just about sort of general things in creativity and the struggles of day-to-day -day making art and the victories of it and all that kind of stuff. But then there's also part of me that feels like maybe that is overestimating how interesting I am. And also maybe it's also just an excuse for me to give people updates on the projects I'm working on, which I don't think is really good content. Uh, but I don't know, I, I thought I'd give it another shot and just keep trying to talk about the things that I'm making. Man, I, I don't know, I, uh, I feel like having been on YouTube for over a decade, I've been sort of conditioned to, to expect that the projects that I work on will be easily finished within two to three weeks, maybe a month tops. I mean, I've worked on some longer form projects, but for the most part, the videos that I've made have been the kind of things that I can make in a day or so or in a few weeks. Um, and, and that started even back when I was doing Lego videos. Like I used to do Lego news and it would just be me basically screenshotting other Lego news and posting a video of that that I made in like five minutes, right? Um, and, and I think, so the, the, the hard thing about that has been now for the past year and a half, almost two years, it's, it's coming up on that. I've been working on a documentary called The Movie Whisperer. I've mentioned it subtly, edging it into conversation in various videos on here. Um, and that's been a really interesting thing to work on, but it's also been probably the longest I've worked on something since, like since the fantasy novel I wrote when I was 12. That, that took a while to write, but that's a whole other thing, right? Like that's, that's, that was just sort of a fun thing that I did as a kid, right? So this has really been the, the first project I've worked on that have, that has been, it's, it's taken a lot of my time and a lot of my energy and it's been with me throughout various seasons of my life. You know, I, I feel like many of the other artistic projects that I've worked on have been for the most part sort of spur of the moment things where I was like, I got really into something and I decided to make a video about it, that kind of thing. And the Movie Whisperer documentary has been the first thing that I've sort of had to stick with even when I'm not feeling it, you know? And, and that's been difficult for sure. Um, and I realize these are not, <laughs> here's me trying to be self-aware, these are not, you know, this is something that many artists go through, right? This is not like some sort of unique trial that I'm going through. Oh, it's so hard, you know, making a piece of art that takes over a week to make, right? No, like that's a thing that so many people have done and I'm glad to be pushing myself in that way. But it is hard, and, and I think especially when it comes to making a documentary, and maybe this is true of other art too, um, you underestimate how much the things that you're making will shift and change as you grow in the process. And a really hard thing to do is to maintain the thematic core or the, the purpose of the thing you were making from the start. And so I, I think, um, at some point in the process, especially with a documentary, you kind of have to either choose to maintain the thematic that you were going for at the beginning no matter what, or to allow it to shift and grow as you're you know, gaining new material and interviewing new people and writing new pieces of, of script and stuff like that. So much of the process of making a documentary especially is about sort of constructing a narrative out of something that doesn't seem to have one. You just went and talked to a bunch of people, right? And now you have to create a narrative out of that. At least that's that's the type of documentary that I'm making. Um, and, and that's difficult in and of itself because it can feel like you're sort of fabricating a story almost. And it doesn't help also that I am, I'm the main character in, in my own documentary. And so then I'm sort of, you know, you're always thinking about what's my character arc that I'm writing for myself, right? And a lot of it is, is true to, to my experience and to who I am and to what my experience making the documentary was. I, I wouldn't say that it's entirely a fictional character arc I'm writing, but there is some level of, you know, you have to make a movie and that involves, <laughs> making a movie is fabrication. Movies are not real. They are, you know, something created by humans. Um, and so I think, yeah, that's difficult. And and so I've I've grown a lot in the process of making this documentary 
Um, I've changed a lot. The ideas that it wants to explore have changed a lot. And, you know, you, you look at uh, movies out there in, in the world that are, um, that are, that are, you know, they can be major studio movies or documentaries, things that are out there that get released to the public. And many times they have too much going on. You know, I think that's, that's my least favorite thing is when it's almost like the Ron Swanson quote in Parks and Rec. Uh, what is it? He says, don't, don't half-ass two things, whole ass one thing. And I think a lot of movies, especially today, and with you know entire rooms of writers working together to to create a story, uh, a lot of times they half-ass more than two things. They half-ass like twelve things. And so there's a lot of different things people want to say that are forced into the script. And as a result, it doesn't have a cohesive thematic core that feels focused, right? And especially in the process of making a documentary, I think that can be even more true because you keep discovering new ideas that you want to explore, but it all does need to be centered around one idea. And that can be the hardest thing to do because when I started making this documentary, I think the idea that I wanted to focus on was the concept of relevance. What is relevant? What is irrelevant? Are the ideas that I'm exploring relevant to the world, relevant to society, or are they more irrelevant? Um, that was sort of the dramatic question in my head. As it's gone along, I've realized that that's not really what I want to explore. That's not really the thematic that, that grabs my heart in a big way. And I think a far more significant thing has been sort of the concept of, of feeling seen and, and how do we see each other and, and uh, what allows us to see each other fully and how do we understand each other's stories. And that's a big part of the documentary. But even that is not the full breadth of what it's about, right? And so the danger is I keep discovering new ideas that I'm trying to work into the story, but it just keeps becoming more and more, there's a lot of things going on. And so I think that's, you know, cause all, all throughout that time I've had to be like, no, but it's also still sort of about relevance and irrelevance and that's what it's about. And I think I realized recently, oh, like I, maybe it's important to also let some ideas go. And so I would say now it's not about that. I, I've allowed that idea of relevance and irrelevance to sort of to, to, to fade away because I think it needs to be focused on something else and I can't try to maintain all those things at once. Um, at the same time, the hard thing about making a documentary is you go and interview people with a, a set of questions in mind which sort of assumes what your thematic point is going to be or, or what it's about. And so I asked a lot of people I interviewed these questions about relevance and now it's like, well, maybe that's not such a relevant concept to the to the documentary. And so then you sort of have to figure out how are these things relevant in different ways, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult. I also think um, an interesting thing for me in the process of making this has been the concept of audience. Um, and this is something I hope maybe could be relevant. <laughs> I need to stop using the word relevant. Maybe it is relevant. Uh, but I think the concept of audience, I hope this might be relatable or, or interesting for other creatives. It's been very clarifying for me and very motivating for me to figure out what my audience is in making this documentary. Because I think when I started making it, my dad and I uh, were making it together. It's sort of about our relationship in a major way. And, and that's um, another piece that's hard is that it's a very vulnerable personal thing. And so that can be hard to pour into for over a year. Um, but when we first started making this documentary, our goal was let's put it on Netflix, let's shop it to Netflix and HBO Max and different streaming services, see if we could get it on, get it on one of the big ones, um, or, or maybe it could go on network television or something, you know, make it big in that sort of sense. And as that went along, I was less and less enthused about any of those options. And I think a major part of that was the fact that when I imagine Netflix or, you know, putting the film that we make on Netflix or something like that, uh, I don't really know who those people are. I don't know who's watching on Netflix. There are tons of movies on Netflix that get put on there and no one watches them. And I don't know what the, that demographic is. I don't know the people who watch network television. I don't watch network television. So I don't even know who I'm talking to in that respect. Um, and I think that's what sort of led me down the the road of the folk filmmaking concept, which um, if you don't know, 
folk filmmaking is this idea um, that it, it's sort of a new movement. I think it's very much just sort of a, I mean, it, it's been around for forever, but it's a new way of labeling this movement and a new way of sort of uh, people moving in this direction very intentionally. Uh, the folk filmmaking concept is basically that it's a movement of filmmakers on the internet who are making movies that don't have the intention of going big in Hollywood or going to theaters or winning film festivals. They're movies that are made usually for a semi-low budget uh, for the purpose of, of being screened to internet audiences, usually for free. And so I, I discovered that movement about halfway through this past year because my own movies had been sort of put in a folk filmmaking list on Letterboxd. And I was like, oh, am I a folk filmmaker? I didn't even know that, but people are putting my films in that list, so I guess. Um, and that actually was a really big and clarifying thing for me because it helped me think about who is the audience that I want to aim for. And finally, I, I decided, just full sail, I have no aspirations for this documentary to go to Netflix. I have no aspirations for it to go to theaters, of course not, or to television or anything like that. I just want to put it on my YouTube channel. And all of a sudden, when I decided that, my motivation changed completely because I knew exactly who the audience was, right? I knew that I'm making it for people like you, who I know and who I understand and who I, you know, think are lovely. <laughs> like, I, I think I, for the most part, get internet people my age, right? I don't get people who watch television. And so knowing my audience was definitely a huge thing that helped motivate me to continue and helped me imagine the type of person that I'm making the film for. I think for the longest time, and this is still something that plagues me, and I even have talked about it in the self-awareness video, I think, um, I would often make art sort of with a person in mind that I'm making it for who is very hostile towards the thing that I'm making. Like whenever I would make a video or you know a documentary or a film or anything, I would always make that film with the intention of converting someone to my side, right? Like, like having someone who is gonna hate the movie watch it and change their mind as they're watching it, right? And the more I thought about that, I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I think actually the thing I should be doing is making art for people who are gonna like it anyway, you know? And sure, you know, I hope maybe some people will, will watch the things that I make and have their minds changed in some way. But for the most part, I, I, now I feel like I've decided I'm making art for people like me, you know? People who are gonna see the things that I make and feel seen by them and, and feel like, oh, someone else is like me and someone else gets it, right? Um, and maybe it will still expose new ideas to them and sort of open, open their minds in some way, right? That's a pretentious way to say it. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really care about like winning over the people who were gonna hate it anyway. And I think that's been another clarifying thing in terms of audience. I'm like, I'm making things for the internet. I know who that is. And I know I'm making things for people who hopefully are good natured and smart and nice and cool, right? <laughs> Not people who would be aggressive and hostile. I don't know why I ever thought that should be my audience in the first place, right? Um, so that was a big thing. I do think though, you know, we can talk about how, how freeing that concept of folk filmmaking is because it really has been freeing for me. And even my wife and I are gonna be making another documentary starting this summer that actually we're gonna travel the world to make a documentary about community and hospitality starting at the manor house that we met at in England. Um, and and that documentary also, we're planning to release fully for free on the internet to an internet audience in sort of that folk filmmaking direction. We're also starting a nonprofit company that's gonna fund that film and other films that aren't just ours. And that the, the goal of that company is going to be to make art for an internet audience, usually to be, to be released for free with no aspirations of theaters or anything like that. And that has been very freeing, right? To know our audience, to feel like we understand the people that we're talking to, um, and, and to, to free ourselves from the ambitions of like, oh, it has to make it big, or it has to go to theaters, or we have to shop it to distributors, or it has to win awards to be successful. No, like, I just want people to, be see, to see it and be moved by it, and maybe to donate some money to the Patreon so that we can keep making more things, right? <laughs> like, those are the main goals, right? Um, at the same time, though that idea can be freeing, there are things that can be demotivating about it. You know, I mean, I've been been 
I don't want to use the word, the word that popped into my head was slaving over. That's, that's an exaggeration. I've been working really hard on this documentary over the past year in a big way, and sometimes it can be really demotivating to think, what am I doing? I, I'm pouring all this time just to make another YouTube video that someone's gonna watch while they're eating lunch or put on and just listen to the audio while they're in the shower or they're gonna get halfway through and then get distracted and watch something else. You know, like, you know, yeah. I think there is something about that ca that can be demotivating where you wish that it could open in a theater where people will go to a theater and sit down and pay their attention fully to it and really, you know, watch what you poured so much into to prepare for them to watch. But at the same time, I guess that's sort of the, that's the blessing and the curse of internet, uh, I hate the word content, internet content, uh, is that you are creating things with that freedom for people to to consume it in the way that they, they want to, you know, and that, is a beautiful thing, I think, and can create even a stronger sense of personal connection because they're sort of doing it on their own terms. But it also can be very scary to think like, man, what's the viewer retention rate on this documentary I've poured so much of my time into gonna be, you know? And usually when you release a movie in a theater, you don't get viewer retention rates because most people sit through the whole movie in theater, right? They don't have stats of the people who walk out because it's pretty minimal. But on YouTube, I mean, I've known for years that most of the videos I make, you know, the the average person only watches maybe half of it. And that's that's actually quite a good number. You know, in the grand scheme of YouTube, there are tons of people who people only watch the first two minutes of their video or that kind of thing. So I'm very grateful for actually the amount of time that people do spend watching my videos, but it, it's, um, you know, it, it can be scary when you're working on the second half of a documentary and you're like, are people even gonna make it this far into the documentary, like to finish it, or will they have tuned out by then? And I recognize again that that's not the person that I'm making it for. I'm making it for the person who's gonna get to the end, and I have to think about that. But it's it's definitely something that I think about. Um, I also think, you know, something that should be acknowledged for sure is I have the the blessing, I have the privilege, frankly, of having an audience that I know will watch the things that I make when I put them out there. Not everyone has that, and that's something that I often have to remind myself. You know, I, I was talking to a friend the other day, and I was telling them, you know, how if a video of mine doesn't get to a thousand views in 24 hours, then I'm like, man, this has failed massively. Like, I feel really embarrassed if, if a video of mine doesn't get to a thousand views in 24 hours. And they were like, dude, that's amazing that it gets to a thousand views in 24 hours. When I post my short films, I only expect them to get like 25 views max in the first few weeks. Like that's that's what I expect and yet I still make them. And that made me go, man, like, wow. I, I, because I started YouTube so young, I've almost forgotten the memory of what it was like to, to, to make things without having any inkling that anyone would watch it, right? And, and that definitely made me evaluate my own privilege and my own uh, assumptions that like, oh, the things I make should be viewed by at least a thousand people. Like that's my expectation when not everyone has that expectation. And so, yeah, it, it has been really motivating to know my audience and to be like, yes, I'm releasing this on YouTube and I know who's gonna watch it and I know who I'm making it for. And, you know, I, I think when I'm making this documentary, I, I think about a lot of you, like specifically, I think of you and I think, I hope this person likes it and I hope this person likes it and I hope this person gets what I'm going for and I can't wait to see what this person thinks of this. And that's been a really motivating thing for me has been knowing that some people will watch it, <laughs> you know? At the same time, again, it's a privilege and I don't, no, you know, it's made me want to learn to exercise that muscle again of making things without any expectation of anyone watching it and just making it for the joy of making, right? Because I, I do think at this point in my career, I make things mostly for, you know, because I want people to see them. And maybe that's not the entire ethos of art. Like maybe art is more than just the people who see it. That's part of why my wife and I started our new channel called The Coley's, which is a whole new channel. And for the longest time, I was very, very resistant to starting a new channel. Cause I was like, I have this base of people on this channel, Houston Coley, 60,000 something, something subscribers. And this is the only place where the stuff that we make is gonna get views. And so we need to put everything we make on my channel so that it gets views. 
but we ultimately talked about how important it was to have a space that was not just mine and was not just hers, but was our space to, to put things out together. And I kind of accepted like, well, you know, maybe it's important to start from scratch again in some ways. And I'm still obviously making videos on this channel, but it actually was kind of a healthy thing for us to make that first video on the Coley's channel, which not to do a promo, but link is below. Uh, or link will be below. And I'll, I'll probably try to remember that. But it was a really healthy thing to, to make that and to pour a ton of our energy and artistic effort into it and to do that within, without any real expectation that it would get over, you know, certainly would not reach a thousand views. Like that, I had no expectation of that. And it has not reached a thousand views. And that's fine, you know? And I think, yeah, it was really a healthy experience to go through that and to make something, I still had people in mind that I hoped would watch it and like it, but to make something without the, you know, the motivation of, of being seen by a massive audience. Um, and that sort of circles back to the f folk filmmaking concept as a whole, which is that sort of you're making things for those those few personal connections that are made and for the few people who, few, who feel seen by it, not for the masses, you know? And that's been something that um, this documentary that I'm working on is, is very much a passion project, is very much a personal project. It requires a lot of vulnerability because it's about my relationship with my dad. And so it's a very vulnerable story. And I think if I was still trying to aim for Netflix or still trying to aim for television or something like that, I would be having to neuter that story in a major way, dumb down all of the vulnerable aspects in order to make it more accessible to everyone. And the great thing about making things for the internet and making things for you specifically has been that I don't feel like I need to do that. I feel very much able to be vulnerable on YouTube as I hope I'm being right now. I'm trying to be, I guess, and a lot more able to do that when I know who the people I'm talking to are. So I'm thankful for that. So that's the video, I think. I don't have much else more to say. The Patreon is in the link below. I guess I'm supposed to say that at the end of every every video. And um, yeah, if if you have liked this or stuck to the end, thank you so much for doing that. Again, that's a privilege in and of itself. And I would love to hear your thoughts on these concepts of audience and you know, does knowing your audience help you make better art, more focused art? Um, the idea of jungle, juggling different themes and trying to keep it focused even as you're working for a really long time on something and watching it evolve in your hands as you're making it. Have any of you had those experiences and what would be your insights on that? I would really like to hear it. Honestly, the comment sections on these things are what I look forward to the most because it feels like it is some sense of community and I love that and I think it's a beautiful thing and so I would love to hear what you have to say about all this stuff. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.